For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. The civic military right-wing US-backed coup d'etat against the democratically elected Bolivian president, Evo Morales, which installed a fascist and racist dictatorship of the right-wing usurper, Hanine Añez, completed a month on December 10. Morales, who is now in Argentina after being granted asylum by the new Argentinian president, Alberto Fernandez, condemned the de facto government for committing innumerable human rights violations. Protests against Morales began the day after the general elections on October 20. The final results showed that he had obtained over 10% more votes than, the, his, than his closest rival, Carlos Mesa, which was necessary for victory. However, the opposition refused to accept the results and began violent mobilizations demanding his resignation. On November 10, President Morales and Vice President Alvaro Garcia Linera resigned after the army-backed right-wing opposition coup against the constitutional government of the Movement Towards Socialism, or MAS. On November 11, due to serious threats to their physical integrity and safety and the escalation of violence and intimidation, Morales and Garcia Linera were forced to leave the country and seek asylum in Mexico at the time. On November 12, in a session of Congress that met without quorum, right-wing legislator Añez declared herself interim president of Bolivia. After assuming power, the de facto government of Añez unleashed an unprecedented level of repression against Morales' supporter, who have been protesting the coup in the streets. It also intensified selective prosecution of political and social leaders to the extent that arrest warrants were issued against several MAS deputies and senators who opposed the coup. The coup supporting police force and armed forces have been brutally repressing the multitudinous mobilizations with tear gas, firearms, beating up and arresting protesters and carrying out violent house raids. The highest points of state terrorism were witnessed in the massacres in which nine anti-coup protesters in Sakaba in Cochabamba and six in Sankata in El Alto were killed by the security forces and hundreds were gravely injured. The discriminatory and authoritarian stance of the de facto government became further evident when it passed the Supreme Decree No. 4078, which exempted the member of armed forces from criminal liability on the same day of the massacre in Cochabamba. In addition, the interim government tried to impede the communication about what was happening in the country. The local press was censored and foreign governments were harassed and attacked. The Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, or the IACHR, and other international human rights defenders verified that Agnes's government committed a number of human rights violations post-coup. On December 11, the IACHR issued a report on its observation visit to Bolivia between November 22 and November 25, following the invitation from the de facto government. In its report, the IACHR expressed utmost concern about human rights violation in the aftermath of the coup and also highlighted the climate of violence characterized by polarization, hostility and hatred based on discrimination, intolerance and racism. The organization cited several examples of excessive use of force in the joint operations of the military and police force. According to the data recorded by the IACHR, 36 people were killed and more than 800 were injured during military and police operations. Referring to the Supreme Decree No. 4078, the IACHR said that the security officials involved in the acts of violence cannot be protected by any type of amnesty or exemption. The organization recommended the de facto government to respect the right to protest, guarantee the right to freedom of expression, make use of force according to international standards, suspend the mass deployment of armed and full armed police forces, cease repression of social protest and arbitrary detention of those who participate in the protest, among other advices. In addition to making recommendation with respect to human rights, the Commission requested that an independent international investigation be carried out on the events recorded in the country after the coup. Last week, the delegation of Argentine human rights defenders, social leaders and lawyers that travelled to Bolivia 
with the objective to observe the human rights situation in the country following the coup also denounced a series of human rights violations by the de facto government. The delegation, in its preliminary report based on evidence and testimonies gathered during their two-day stay in Bolivia, confirmed the complicity of Anies' government in the massacres perpetrated in Sakava and Sinkata. The delegation also said it had evidence of the explicit support of foreign governments in the coup. The dictatorial government explicitly confirmed this by restoring relations with the United States and Israel, suspended more than a decade ago, and manifesting a new alignment in terms of international politics. In addition, the visa requirement for American and Israeli citizens has also been eliminated. Morales had earlier invited the Organization of American States to conduct an audit. The OSS preliminary report called for fresh elections. Following this, Morales called for new general elections hours before he had to resign. However, after the coup, the OAS, responsible for auditing the election, was unable to demonstrate any significant irregularities. The information entered with the counting and computing of votes cannot be verified, according to them, because of the burning of ballots in the region of Beni, said the OAS in its final report. Besides, the word fraud didn't appear even once in the final report. In addition, through a document, more than one 100 economists and statistics experts from different universities in the US, Spain, Argentina, India, Brazil, Canada and other countries ruled out any possibility of fraud in the presidential elections and criticized the actions of the OAS. However, to legitimize itself, the dictatorial government of Agnes took advantage of the leadership vacuum in MAS after Morales' exile to get the parliament to annul the election on October 20 and call for new elections in the first quarter of 2020. It also managed to ban Evo Morales and Alvaro Garcia Linera as candidates. In this context, last weekend, the MAS held a national assembly in the city of Cochabamba, where Morales was appointed as the campaign leader of the MAS for these elections. Bien, cantar, que vamos 